students, this is your Inequality Exponents Test Review. Our test is going to be on Tuesday, the 18th. Uh, remember, you do not have school on Monday, uh, so this will be on a, it'll be like it's over a weekend. You're supposed to take this on your own notebook paper, and you will be allowed to use this on your test. The first thing we learned about was single variable inequalities, which just means that it's going to have one letter in it. So single variable inequality looks something like this, 2x minus 5 is less than or equal to 13. We solve these just like we do equations. We box that. We draw our line down. We get rid of a minus 5 by doing plus 5. That cancels out. 2x is less than or equal to 13 plus 5 is 18. When it's beside it, we divide it, so we divide both sides by 2. And x is less than or equal to 9. We do something called graphing on these. When we graph them, You'll have a number line given to you, so you won't have to make your own number line. But the first thing you have to decide is what type of dot does it use. These two symbols use filled in dots. And then on the next slide, they're going to use solid line. These two symbols use open dots, and they use dotted lines. So this one uses a filled in dot. So we go here, put a filled in dot at 9. That arrow points to the left, so we make our arrow go to the left. Let's look at one more example that shows a, a, a different rule. Negative 3x plus 6 is less than 18. Draw our line down. Box. You'll notice that this has a negative on it, and that's what's going to cause some issues here in just a few minutes. Minus 6 to both sides. Bring down the negative 3x. 18. Bring down your less than. 18 minus 6 is 12. When it's beside it, we divide it. That cancels. 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. There's a rule that if you divide or multiply by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. So less than becomes greater than. And this is our answer. So we go to our number line. There's negative 4. Negative 3 would be on that side. Negative 5 on that side. Because this is a greater than symbol, we use an open circle. It points to the right, so we draw to the right. Linear inequalities, or two variable inequalities, these are the ones that do the, uh, the shading, um, shade up, shade down, and solid line and dotted line. So the face helps you with your solid line and dotted line. So that's a dotted line. And that's a solid line. Shade up and shade down, less than and less than or equal to. Less than is always going to be shade down greater than, greater than, or equal to is always going to be shade up. And it makes sense because the smaller values, less values are down, greater values are up. Okay. Two variables means that it's going to have an x and a y, so it might look something like this. 2x plus 2y is less than 6. This is the same idea as solving for y. We box our y, we draw our line down, subtract 2x from both sides, that cancels, bring down my 2y, bring down my less than. This can't actually be done, so resist the temptation to do 4x, four, four because you can't. You just have to write it out in mx plus b form. So the x part goes first, the number part goes second. When it's beside it, we divide it, so I divide everything by 2. Y, the symbol does not flip because I divide it by a positive. If it was dividing by a negative on here, it would flip. Negative 2 divided by positive 2 is negative 1x. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now, the graphing of these looks a little bit different. To graph these, we got to know what's M, what's B, what type of shading, and what type of line. So our M, for MX plus B, our M is negative 1, which is down 1 over 1. And our B is 0, 3. Because it's less than, we check this face right here. Because it's less than, it's a dotted line. Because it's less than, it's shade down. So this is what it would look like. I go plot B, one, two, three. And then from there I go down one over one for my next dot. Down one over one for my next dot. I'm using a dotted line. And then we're supposed to shade down. So if this were a ladder, you'd climb up on this side. So the downside is this side over here. 
And remember, we can do this a little bit in our calculator. You would type this into your calculator. Less than would be the shade down, which looks like this when you change in your menu. And we'll show you an example of that in class before we take our test. Okay. Just remember that this can be a solid line, it can shade up, and it can uh, flip if you divide by a negative number. Okay. Our exponent rules. Um, exponent to exponent. If we see an exponent to exponent problem, that means we multiply. If we see a multiply problem, that means we add. Remember, these are superpowers. They don't follow the same rules as other stuff. When we see an add problem, we do nothing. And these are the things we do to the exponents themselves. Regular numbers get treated regularly. For these, this is only what we do with the exponent, which is just the little number on top, not the number out in front. Okay. Um, we had some other rules in here. If it's a divide problem, we actually come up here and subtract. And if it's a subtract problem, we still do nothing. And we'll show you examples of each one of these over the next couple of pages here. Okay. Multiply problems. x squared times x times x to the ninth. Okay. We look at all the exponents. 2, there's a 1 there. It's just hidden. And 9. So this becomes x to the 2 plus 1 plus 9. Or x to the 12th. Okay. If they have numbers in front of them and multiple letters, so we have 5a squared b times 6, a to the third, b to the fourth. It's basically like three different problems. You do 5 times 6, that's 30. You do a2 and a3, 2 plus 3 is a5. And you do b1 and b4, 1 plus 4 is 5. So that is your answer. But you've got to remember, regular numbers get treated regularly. They get multiplied. The other ones get add. So multiply equals add for the exponents. Dividing, we know that dividing equals subtract for the exponents. Okay. So x to the seventh divided by x to the third. Move the three up there. Seven minus three is x to the fourth. We always move to where the bigger one's at. If we have x to the 5th over x to the 10th, whoops, 5 comes down here, and we have x to the 5th, but that's on bottom, we have to have a 1 placeholder on top. If you have numbers in the problem, let's say you have 2 6 a squared b to the 5th c over a to the 5th b to the 2nd c to the third. Regular numbers get treated regularly. So this, I would divide 2 by 6, and then math 1, enter. And when I do that, it's going to tell me 1 third. 1 goes on top of the fraction, 3 goes on the bottom. Then I take each one of these separately. Where's the bigger a on bottom? So 5 minus 2 is 3. Where's the bigger b on top? 5 minus 2 is 3. Where's the bigger c? On bottom, 3 minus 1 is 2. And this would be your answer. The only difference would be you would not see that 1 there. Okay. If it were another number besides 1, you would see it there. Okay. Exponent to exponent. These are the ones that students usually do the best on. They are an exponent here raised to another exponent. The rule on exponent to exponent is multiply. So 2 times 5 is 10, and you get x to the 10th. Okay. If we have a number in there, let's say we have 4x squared y to the 3rd to the 2nd. This 2, it's like the double rainbow, except this is a triple rainbow. It goes to everybody. Here, here, and here. So 4 squared is 16. 2 times 2 is x4. 2 times 3 is y6. Zero exponents. Anything to a zero is one.
everything to the zero is one. Okay, so anytime you have parentheses, if you have a zero outside of it, that automatically goes to one. Okay. Negative exponents move to make happy. I remember we talked about it in our class. If you have a negative x squared up there, an x to the negative two up there, to make him happy, he doesn't like being up there. You move him underneath. He becomes positive. You gotta have a one placeholder. Okay? If he's on bottom and unhappy, we move him to the top. That makes him happy, and there wouldn't be anything underneath. If you have a whole series of things. This guy's unhappy up here, so you move him down. This guy's unhappy here, so you move him up. B4 is happy where he's at, so B4 stays up there by himself. C3 comes to join him. A2 goes underneath, and it's all about moving people to where they're happy. Multi-step problems just means you have a combination of things that we've talked about in the previous slide. So you might have something that looks like this, 2x squared, y squared, times 3x squared, y to the third, uh, to the second. And so you'd have to take care of them. Power to power is going to be more important. That's an exponent, so you'd have to take care of that part first. So this you wouldn't do anything with. 3 squared, 3 to the second, is 9. 2 times 2 is x4. 3 times 2 is y6. Then this becomes a multiplication problem. 2 times 9 is 18. x2 and x4 is x6. y2 and y6 is y8. And this, like I said, could be any combination of the problems we did. It could be something like 3xy to the fourth divided by 2x squared y squared. And so you'd have to do this part here first, then you'd have to deal with the division part. Okay. You will be allowed to use this on your test. Um, you can ask questions about this before we take our test. Uh, just be ready for our test on Tuesday, February 18th.